All right, good morning, everybody. And we're going to be kicking off our media availability here uh, with Joey Logano, driver of the number 22 Shell Pennzoil Ford for Team Penske. Joey, you are coming into this weekend red hot. The Team Penske team is red hot coming into this weekend. Um, six straight top tens, nine out of the last ten races. Uh, you guys have been in the top ten. Uh, most recent winner in the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series at Talladega last weekend. Obviously a much different challenge, though, this weekend at Dover. How can you guys capitalize on that momentum that you have coming into the race weekend, and how important is that to kind of take that into the rest of the season? Well, it's super important. Um, you know, it's, it felt so good last week to, uh, you know, finally break through and get that win again. We've had a few seconds since uh, Richmond, but um, to be able to break through and, um, you know, lead a lot of laps last couple weeks and get some stage points at Richmond and then going to Talladega and, and breaking through and getting that win, uh, that's a huge confidence builder for our race team. You know, we, we've always believed that we can do it, and we believe that we're the best race team out there. Um, but, you know, when you don't win, uh, it, it gets harder and harder to believe that. And uh, to be able to go out there and, and make that happen uh, is a big, um, you know, big boost for us. So um, it's all about carrying that momentum now, all right? It's, uh, you know, we're in the playoffs. It's all about getting as many playoff points as possible, winning those stages, uh, collecting the regular series uh, season points, and then uh, winning those races, that's where the most playoff points come from. So uh, now we can um, you know, keep doing what we've been doing. We're not going to change what we've been doing. That's what we've been shooting for the whole, all along, and that consistency has been there. But to see the speed starting to come, uh, that's the big difference. So um, you know, heading to Dover, like you said, we're feeling really good, and uh, we're ready to push hard and try to get the big trophy here, the big monster. Um, obviously, you know, you're a Northeast guy. Dover is one of our few Northeast race tracks. Uh, you made your national series debut here in 2008 in NASCAR Xfinity Series. Um, how good does it feel to know that you're close to home and this is a racetrack that, you know, you do have some positive history with in the past? Yeah. Um, I started my first Xfinity race here, uh, back in 08. So, uh, my, uh, you know, Dover has always been a, a special place for me. Um, got to do my victory tour here the other day and go to the uh, Air Force Base down the road um, and, and visit a lot of our, our servicemen and women and say thank you. And that was really special. And thanks to the racetrack for setting that up. Um, but, you know, I, I do enjoy coming here as a race car driver. Uh, it's probably one of the racetracks that you f still feel like you're going very, very fast <laughs> and things are happening quick. So it's it's definitely a badass racetrack. And uh, that, that part never changes every time I get out there. Um, it's a lot of fun for us, us race car drivers. So uh, I look forward to Dover all the time. And um, hopefully uh, we're able to uh, find some speed in our car. This has been um, probably a, a weaker racetrack for Team Penske as of late. You know, we've, we've run well here, but um, the last two, three years has been a, kind of a, a little bit of a struggle for us. So um, hopefully with the speed in our cars that we've had the last few weeks and then uh, and some of the things we've learned here in the past, we can make our cars quick today and, um, and, and then win on Sunday. All right, we will open things up here to the media room. Uh, Claire, we'll start with you in the front. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. When teams go through what yours did last year and then it took this long to win, sometimes that eats up teams. It, it didn't yours, but people were talking initially. They were like, oh, this is going to be hard for him and Todd. H how did you guys work that out? How did you work out not kind of eating on each other? Well, I mean, that's you're 100 percent right. It's, it's definitely a time that it's easy to start pointing fingers. It's easy to start saying, well, it's this, it's that. And and, um, and that's when teams just kind of implode from the inside out. And that's that's basically the end of that race team. But, you know, to be able to fight through that, you have to stick together. Um, you know, you have to keep working together. You have to keep doing the things you did when you won. Um, but it obviously it's a lot harder <laughs> when you're not winning. Uh, so, you know, for, for us, we stuck together as a team, um, not just as, you know, the 22 team, but Team Penske as a whole. Um, you know, I, you know, no one in the race shop is pointing fingers at, at me or, or Todd or, you know, anybody really. Um, you know, we all kept our heads down and kept digging and we're, we knew we were going to fight through it. We knew we still um, had the, the um, capability to, to go out there and win races because it's the same group that did, uh, same group that almost won two championships. Um, so I feel... Uh, com confident in, in what I had around me. It's just uh, it, it's hard to get through it. And and honestly, um, you know, once you get through something like that, you become stronger as a team, right? And the teams that are able to hold together and get through that, is, you, you learn a lot, right? And so why God puts you through things like that sometimes is to, to force you to learn something. And uh, I learned a lot about myself as a driver. I think as a team, we, we learned a lot about each other um, and to hopefully prevent that from happening again.
ESPN. Did you have any sense of relief once you found out the car did pass tech at R and D? <laughs> and do you come into this race with any sort of different aura? I, I know the approach is d is not different, but does it feel any different knowing okay we're back in the playoffs compared to the last forty six weeks you've come to the racetrack? Yeah, well, it's funny we had a driver council meeting at the R and D center on Tuesday. And I walked in there and they had snacks over there. I walked over to snacks. I'm like, you're not serving cucumbers over here, are you? And uh, everyone got a good little laugh out of it. And uh, I said, well, I guess we're good. And he said, we're good. I said, thank God. So uh, I didn't want to go through that again. <laughs> and um, so we're all set there. So that feels really good. Um, and you had a second part of the question. And I don't remember what you said. It did you're in the playoffs now compared to the previous 46 weeks. Yeah, there's a little uh, feeling of relief in a way uh, within the race team that you kind of, okay, we're in, the goal has changed, right? You know, when you start the season, um, you know, it's always to win the championship, but you have to take one step at a time, right? You got to get in the playoffs first before you can win the championship. Learned that last year. And, um, you know, for us to say, okay, we're in the, we're in the playoffs. Now we can focus in on winning the championship. Let's focus on, like I said, getting those points, getting those, those stage points, the playoff points, and, um, and winning those races to, to help us get to Miami. Um, that is the next goal at this point is we got to get to Miami and then, and then fight for the championship. So, um, you know, one, one of the three goals, you know, checked off, and now it's on to the next one. So that's a, that's a good feeling. We're going to go to Reed, Lee, and then Jeff. Uh, Reed Spencer, NASCAR Wire Service. Um, not to bring up a bad memory, but almost every highlight reel from Dover still <laughs> nine years later includes the incident in the 20 car. When you come here, do you still think about that? I honestly don't until you bring it up. Uh, <laughs> it's not you. It's every, it's everybody. It's a, a spectacular moment here. And um, unfortunately, when, when people think of Joey Logano and Dover, it, they think of a big crash. So we got to figure out, even if I win, I still think it's going to be people thinking of the crash. <laughs> it's just... That's what happens until someone else barrel rolls, and, and I hope that doesn't happen to anybody. Um, but that's just, yeah, I mean, oh, well. It's been so long ago, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. You know, it is what it is. I always thought the funniest part, though, is when um, I came back here the year later, or was it the next race, they had the program. I don't know if you guys remember the program they had, and they had Miles the Monster, and they had the thing when you turn it, it moves, you know, when you move the front cover. And it had my car, the Mi Miles the Monster had my car in his hand, and when he turned it, it slammed my car into the ground. And I thought, oh, that's nice. So, thanks, Dover. <laughs> but we're good now. <laughs> go to Lee. Be honest, what do you really think about Matt Kenseth coming back next week? Just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's just has to be honest. <laughs> gotcha. Um, <laughs> Anyway, um, <laughs> when, you <laughs> when you were on the outside looking in at the chase, I mean, given the, you know, all the success that you've had since coming to Penske, um, how did you deal with it? I mean, I would think that, you know, the baby was a distraction, you know, getting ready to have the baby was a distraction, but when you've been that good and you're with a team that's that good, uh, how do you, you know, what did you do? Did you just think of what can we do to get better for when the time comes? Hey, honestly, that's exactly what it is, is what can we do to get better? Um, you know, we were in a slump for, for sure. Um, you know, we, we came out of Richmond and we, we had our, our penalty and then we had a crash the next two weeks. We crashed in Talladega, we crashed here, oh, three weeks and we crashed in Kansas. Uh, and we lost so many points those three weeks, and it's like, uh oh, what happened? <laughs> you know, and uh, and then we just didn't have speed in our car. And when you don't have speed, you, you happen to just get caught up in more junk. You know, you don't score stage points. It's hard to make it up. And by the time we started forget, figuring it out and getting better, the playoffs were starting, um, and it was too late. So, um, you know, it was definitely a, a challenging season. But you just say, okay, let's get better. Is it frustrating? Is it really hard? Do you have to have those tough conversations? Yes, you have to. That's the only way you get better. You got to have those tough conversations with with yourself, uh, and, and mentally know how to become stronger, and and, and with your team, right? You got to have those tough conversations, and they're not comfortable. They're not fun. Or you know, it's it's, but it's not supposed to be, right? It's a job. Uh, you know, this isn't supposed to be all about fun. You know, I, I'm I'm lucky enough to enjoy it and and have fun with this, but 
you know, you got to remember that it's not really about fun. It's about winning. And, uh, and the fun comes along with the winning part. So you got you to gotta work for that. And, um, you know, and that's what makes it rewarding. That's what, that's what made it feel so good last week. Uh, you know, I, I said it felt like we won the Daytona 500 because it's been so long and, and we went through such a slump to, to finally win again. That feeling is like, oh, we got through it. You know, it feels so good. And, and, you know, we have to keep working hard to maintain this level that we're at right now. And we're not where we need to be either. You know, we, we won the race, yes, and we've scored some stage points, but we're not where we need to be yet. Our speed is not there yet. Um, we're getting closer. We're making progress. But we're not – you know, where the four, the 18, um, the 78, those guys have been quicker than us, um, you know, in, in, you know, recent weeks. We've made a big step to get closer, but we're not there yet. So we got to keep our heads down and, and keep pushing. And as Roger says all the time, don't trip on your press clippings because uh, you won one race. Uh, you know, you got to keep, keep working hard at the being able to, um, you know, find more speed and win more races. We go to Jeff. Jeff Gluck from JeffGluck.com. You mentioned there was a driver's council meeting on Tuesday. Um, what? Kind I of knew I shouldn't have brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew the like next question was going like to be about the driver council the door. meeting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're, are, are pit guns one of the topics that the drivers care about and are talking to NASCAR right now? I, I think there's a lot of um, there's a lot of different things we talk about in these meetings. Um, um, and, and a lot of it comes from, from NASCAR and, and helping the communication. Uh, to the drivers on, on what their thoughts are and what the next steps are as a sport. Um, and then we put together a list our, ourself um, of questions and, and things that we'd like changed. And, um, and, and mainly it's just a place for us to be vocal and be able to uh, you know, sh express our concerns, good and bad, uh, in, in, our, um, in our sport, and, uh, which is good because the drivers care, right? We, we care, right? And, and it's not just about what the drivers want. It's about what the industry wants it's what is good for the media it's what's good for our fans what's good for our owners um and nascar does a good job at venting all that um and listening to us drivers listening to the team owners uh listening to competition directors uh and, and putting that together and making the right rules changes and, and that's it's something new for our sport right it's something that hasn't uh we haven't really had those avenues uh to, for all of us to work together as one as one it, you know for our sport usually it's uh you know you have you know you just walk in the trailer and, and complain about something but now when we can come as a united force uh with nascar together um you know to to make the right decisions for our sport going forward so we're all uh are in a thriving industry so um our sport you know it's in great health and we talk about that you know we talk about um, you know, the amount of fans that are still watching our sport and how uh, great things are going and, and, and a lot to be proud of. And there's a lot to work on um, as well. And, and I don't think that's a secret either, um, that we are trying to make our sport better and better every day. And you look at the things that come out of the uh, all the councils, you know, with the, the stages and um, and some of the, the way we've, we've raised the intensity and, and the way we've been able to save money for race teams. Um, and, and all that's going to come with some growing pains. But uh, if we don't make change sometimes we will fall behind uh as a as a sport and i think we've all done a great job at trying to stay innovative and, and make the changes and, and make sure that health stays there yeah we talk about everything yeah we talk about pit guns we talk about everything you know and um i i think the pit gun thing's been fine i think that's kind of uh like i said there'll be growing pains when we make some of these changes right there's going to be a learning curve for the race teams for for nascar and and all that but we have to make changes sometimes to to continue growing um and there will be pain when that happens but uh y you can't stay in your comfort level forever uh you know in your little comfort zone because that that's there's no growth in your comfort zone all right we got time for one more we'll go to chris in the front Chris Knight, CatchFence.com. Joey, what, at what point in the season do you have to be fully emerged out of the slump to be uh, championship worthy? Um, well, this weekend, <laughs> it would be nice. Uh, you know, I, I, I feel like we're, we're getting out of it, like I said. I mean, the win helps a lot, and, and, and Richmond helped a lot. And, and really, like you said, the, the 9 out of 10 races in the top 10, that consistency is there. Uh, I'd say we're, we're – we're doing a good job, you know, and I, I feel like the confidence in the team is as high as it's been in a year. 
um, that's for sure. So, um, you know, I think if we can go out here and have another good run and, and, and keep keep building those points and, and staying, you know, up there into points, uh, you know, being second in points right now, we're not, we're not even far out of the lead. So um, if we keep just doing our thing, uh, you know, eventually, you know, we're going to feel like we are the championship winning team, but we just got to get a little faster. You know, I think that's really the biggest thing is just how can we be the car that's leading consistently? And we have been the last two weeks, but how can we be that, you know, as we go forward in the next three, four weeks, uh, and then we'll feel like we're definitely in championship condition. So, um, you know, we have a little bit of time, which is good. Um, I don't look at it as we have any time because I want to win next week, and I think those playoff points mean so much. But, um, you know, we got to be, you know, one of those top three cars like I brought up earlier. We got to be considered one of them uh, to, to feel like we're uh, a real good, you know, a strong threat of winning the, the championship. All right, Joey, appreciate the time, and uh, good luck this weekend. All right, cool. Thanks, guys.